YouTubers, Pastor Bob. Hey, uh, all of our videos this weekend are centered around uh, Philippians, but uh, I want to I want to talk for just a minute. Uh, I have a lot of people ask me all the time something along the lines of, "Am I my brother's keeper?" Well, I'm not responsible for them. They're not my problem. I'll, don't come to me. I didn't do that. Am I my brother's keeper? And we're going to start off in Genesis 4, 8 to 9, where this question comes from. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And needless to say, there wasn't a whole lot of brotherly love mixed in there. More like pride, envy, strife, and things along those lines. So Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against his brother Abel and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel your brother? Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, the answer is yes, you are your brother's keeper. Do you know that you're responsible for everybody around you? Everybody. And the question is, is when do you draw the line? When does that responsibility end? Paul tells us that the brother's keeper rule is still in effect on this side of the cross, in the area of grace. This is what he says, Philippians 2, 3, and 4. This is what Paul tells us. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Paul tells us very plainly, yes, you are your brother's keeper. The safety and the well-being, the emotional well-being, is ours for all those around us. We're supposed to help anybody when we can. We're supposed to watch out for them, give them advice, help them through this life. We are their keeper. We're responsible for them. Here's one area. Business dealings. Business dealings. Like say like for instance you go to buy a car from somebody. You see the ad, you go to buy the car. Is it your job to sit there and, and whittle them down and negotiate and beat them up to get the absolute lowest price you can possibly get? Is that what you're supposed to do? No. You're supposed to arrive at a price that is absolutely fair for them and you. Same thing at like, like garage sales. Are you supposed to go in there and just try to rip these people off? Just try to get as much as you can for as little money as you can. You know, uh, my wife and I love having yard sales. I, I used to yard sale all the time. And I would really be amazed at the people that go to yard sales. I mean, you, you can have like, like a bicycle. One time I had this lady, we had two bicycles that we bought, brand spanking new, rode them maybe two times, and they were cruisers, but my wife didn't like hers because it didn't have gears. And so uh, we thought, well, we'll get rid of them and get, get bikes, you know, with gears. They were brand spanking new. And I was selling, I don't know what I paid for them, 300 bucks, something like that, maybe not that much. And uh, I think I was selling both of them for like $75. And this one lady wanted those bikes, and she kept offering me $5 for both of them, $10. I mean, it was just amazing. But uh, what people think, you know, when they're, when they're doing business dealings. But if you're your brother's keeper during a business dealing, you're supposed to arrive at a price that's fair for them and for you. Now, there are times when you're supposed to draw the line. These are a couple times when you can draw the line. When someone starts abusing you, when they start cheating you, like if someone comes up to borrow money from you and you lend them money and then they keep coming back and coming back. People listen, you need to let people learn from their own mistakes. If this person goes and eats out three times a week, they have no business borrowing money from you. They need to learn from their own mistakes. You know, I had a daughter, my youngest daughter one time, she got in a fight with another girl and she got thrown in jail. And uh, 
she calls me up. Me and my wife go visit her in jail. And I told her, I'm not bailing you out. I'm not bailing you out. You got in a fight, you wound up in jail, do your time, call me when you're done, I'll come get you. I wasn't about to bail her out. I won't bail anybody out of jail. If you're not guilty, I will bail you out. If you're guilty, do your time. You need to let people learn from their mistakes. You cannot let people depend on you that need to be depending on themselves. So listen, we are our brother's keeper, but we have to put a little bit of wisdom in there. We don't let people abuse us. We let people learn from their own mistakes. We help them out as much as we can, but when they start abusing us, you draw the line. Anyway, I hope that helps. <laughs> Some of you are probably going to think I'm really mean for not bailing out my own daughter, but hey, no way, no way. You wind up in jail. If you if you didn't do it, I'll come get you. If you did do it, do your time. But anyway, that's that's life according to Pastor Bob. <laughs> I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I'm glad you weren't my dad. Anyway, that's, that's the way it was. So uh, anyway, I hope that uh, gives you something to think about. Just remember, heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.